High five. Look at that. Solid. If we've perfected anything. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we talk about something that I hate. And that I love. Oh, Jesus. We're talking about moving. Yeah. Physically picking up your stuff and going to another yeah, place man. of residence. <laughs> Let's talk about Zumba. Zumba. Yeah. Zumba. You know what I do? I don't actually know anything about Zumba. I exercise. So I'm not going to pretend to make fun of it because I, I bet you I would be awful at it. Yeah. I exercise, um, I, I don't want to say a fair amount, but somewhere between zero and some I exercise. For as much as I hate to sweat, I, I still exercise. But when it comes to moving, like moving residents, I hate it. All right. So what is the thing you hate most? That's our icebreaker. I hate packing. Um, because I'm such a pack rat, it takes me forever to pack stuff. Because I know, rationally speaking, the less I own, the less stuff I have to box up, the less stuff I have to move, everything's better. And yet I'm a pack rat. And so if I could... Okay, so this could be fixed in two ways. Either I completely sweep everything into a box and move it with me, or I throw everything out <laughs> and not even look at it, not sort through it. But because of I am who I am, everything gets sorted. Do I need to keep this? You know, yes, no. And then it goes into different like, recycling piles, garbage piles, donation piles. Uh, so I hate the, the sorting of my life, and I hate the packing side of moving. That's what pisses me off the most. I love both of those things. Ah, it's an opportunity to... Like, establish order in my already orderly, like, mm -hmm. assemblage of things, which, which slowly accrues disorder because I'm not immune to entropy, mm -hmm. but, and, and it gives me the opportunity to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, because I'll look at it and I'm like, either I'm going to keep this forever because it's a grown-up box, and yeah. you, as a grown-up, you accrue boxes that you have until someone else has to sort through those boxes. Mm -hmm. But, like, and these boxes contain a whole bunch of meaning. Mm -hmm. Um... Or it's something that I've never used or, or I'm not going to use. I'm looking uh, at, at past the camera at a skipping rope that's been hanging there for two years. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to get rid of it. Or I know that it's coming with me. And, like, if I'm remotely on the fence about that, then, I mean, sure, I'll pack it. But I am, I'm a pack rat to a point. Like, there's a point where I hit my limit and I run out of space. And I'm like, all right, now we get rid of things. Mm -hmm. That's so I'm moving to a. Sp I, I am moving. Mm -hmm. um, like I'm, I guess a month after we record this. -ish. Yeah, give or take. Um, so so I'm in the process of doing that, and I am moving to a place that has more space. So we'll see how that turns out. Mm -hmm. As far as my my pack rat tendencies, the things I hate packing are are things that are like weirds, so like uh, spray paint cans and stuff, like stuff that has like hazardous. Uh, or, or special transport needs, propane tanks, mm -hmm. um, just because you know, I always worry. But the thing that I hate about moving isn't packing, it's paperwork. Mm -hmm. Because that, oh, it's all the little pieces. It's getting the internet set up. It's making sure like the lease is... is set and signed and all the details are correct it's uh, all getting all the utilities transferred the insurance set up and all, like all the all the little all the little tiny pieces that you need to get in place not so you can move but you so you can live in this new place and i hate it <laughs> for no good reason like it's it's because it's always been fine and it will likely always continue to be fine um, but I'm always, I have this irrational worry that I'm going to mess up the paperwork somehow and like void my lease or wind up in a place that has no power or I'm going to have to wait like three months for internet. And of course, barring weird circumstances, like none of this is true and none of this has ever happened. I mean, mm -hmm. even if, you know, I don't get a power bill for two months because I screwed up the paperwork, they're still going to phone me or phone my landlords and be like, hey, hey. And then I'm like, and I will pay it with my budget from my budget, and I will know well before that happens. They're just gonna, I'm just gonna get up one morning and find out that they shut my power off, probably. But it is a thing that like just just worries me immensely. 
And it's funny because that stuff doesn't bother me or worry me at all. <laughs> well, that tells me we should move in together. <laughs> yeah, you handle all the, the packing and whatnot, and I oh. handle all the paperwork logistics. Yeah, that stuff doesn't bother me. Even, like, the only thing I maybe fret about is one year after, so uh, with Canada Post, you can set up mail forwarding to your new address, and I always sign up for at least a year. And when it comes time for the end of the year, I always like, there could be stuff, non-regular mail that I receive that I haven't received yet that hasn't mm-hmm. that I haven't changed the address on. So maybe I'll pay for one more year of this service. Yeah. But beyond that, that's I don't really fret about a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah, I still get mail for old roommates. Um, happily, I'm still in touch with them. Oh, but. one thing I am bad about that I haven't done yet is I still haven't changed my driver's license. Mm. Yeah, because you have sixty days, probably thirty days no, from when no, you move. It's, it's way less than that. Yeah, you don't get a lot of time, and I still I still haven't gone and changed. I think the last time I moved it was five. Uh, and they sent me a temporary one. That's po- it's possible. I need to to change that. Yeah, yeah, you do. You should do that. It's been on my extended to do After the podcast. Yeah. So what is your history moving? Like, I mean, and I guess particularly as an adult, like as a kid, as a kid, moving is more of a pain, but you're not really an active participant in it. Like even yeah. if you're, even if you're carrying stuff and packing stuff, mm-hmm. you don't have to, you're, you're spared a lot of the headaches, mm-hmm. which I think is, is the adults around you's way of helping to protect you from the amount of bullshit you will have to deal with later in life. Yeah. Um, I split my life up into two distinct phases, Mm. BF and AF, before frosh or before freshman year, after (laughs) freshman year of university. Because before freshman year, my life was exactly as you indicate. Yes, I helped to move in some cases, but they were largely moves made by my parents from one house to another, or in the case when we moved to the States, from, you know, one country to the next, one state to the next. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I would have a part in that. But then once I went into university, all hell breaks loose. Uh, we tallied it up before in the pre-show that between entering university in 2005 and now, basically the last couple months, I have moved 15 distinct times. And there's a couple in there where it was distinct only because I had to fully move my stuff out of one place and into storage for like a week. And then pack it all back into a truck and move it to the next place. So, I mean, you could make an argument that there's a few, one or two of those moves that don't count. And it may be, say, 13 moves instead of 15. But with still residence That's impressive. Yeah, with residence moves, uh, in and out of residence uh, for, you know, undergrad, um, moving to and from home with my parents, uh, moving back just all of these moves it's basically 15 distinct moves from 2005 to 20 so the 17 or uh, 12 years yep yeah i don't know why i said 17 it's 2017 now so um yeah that's that's a lot of moves this is why i hate moving this is why i hate packing this is why when you physically move boxes it's okay for me because you basically dissociate you put your head down you pick up heavy stuff and you walk it somewhere so i mean you can kind of get through that and a lot of my moves were by myself. You know, I'd steal the, the pickup truck or a van from my parents. I'd drive to the residence and I would, you know, load and everything uh, myself, bring yep. it home. At like 2 o'clock in the morning, my parents, so I'd wake them up accidentally by loading stuff in the garage. And they'd come out and like, what are you doing? I'm unloading. Oh, I should leave it till morning. Go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's in a nutshell, my, my history of moving. Fair. Uh, I, on the other hand, am the opposite. I have moved once as an adult. I couch surf for a while in my in my late teens, but if we if we think of moving as physically packing up your possessions and and moving them to another home, uh, I've only done it once as an adult, and it was five years ago. That's when I moved in here, and I I. I love moving. Like, as, as an adult, as a kid, I, I, I sort of hated it. As an adult, I've helped a lot of people move. I've helped a lot of people pack. I enjoy... I think I did a video about it on my channel a couple years ago about how I love helping people move because it makes me happy. Moving is how, moving is how you find out how your real friend, who your real friends are. <laughs> and I enjoy being counted among them because nobody, nobody wants to pick up a bunch of boxes all day no. for the promise of pizza and beer. But you, you do it because 
it needs doing. Mm -hmm. And that regardless, regardless of, you know, anything else, it, it needs doing. Someone is going to have to do it. And I like, I like helping out with that. It makes me happy. Mm -hmm. it, it fulfills me and my friendshipping desires. <laughs> um, and I guess that's part of the nature of moving mm -hmm. is that, that mix of like when you, when you are the one doing it is that mix of dread and excitement. Mm -hmm. I've definitely gone through both where it like turns out you have to apply for apartments now mm -hmm. and apply for places to live. Mm -hmm. When I, the last time I moved, it was just like credit check. Do you have money? Okay. Here. No. Now, now they like check references and. And that might be a function mm -hmm. of it being Kitchener Waterloo. I imagine if you were in a different town that wasn't a university, high turnover. Fair, fair. There, there might be a slight, I don't know if that, that goes everywhere. And perhaps if you're listening or watching, you can note it in the comments what your experiences are outside of Kitchener Waterloo. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely an interesting experience. I find I sit on the dread side of it because I'm a procrastinator. And so. Mm. So because I procrastinate, I tend to do the packing process slowly. Uh, the last move I did, I gave my two months notice. So I had two months to move and I already had a place to move to. So I, I just packed and moved over a series of weekends, which is the exact opposite of what you like to do. You, I stretched it out. And you know what, to be honest, in doing the last move, I do not recommend moving slowly over uh, two months. Um, I know some people who swear by the slow move. And, and, and I mean... If that if that is your your jam, then by all means. But yeah, no. For me, it's a group of people will arrive at my home. Everything in my home will be in boxes, mm -hmm. and they will be reasonably uniformly sized. Mm -hmm. We will like boxes, milk crates, like box box like objects, um, filing cabinets, things like that. Mm -hmm. It will be reasonably uniformly sized. There will be a dolly mm -hmm. or a pump truck once, and we will transport these things onto a truck and transport them to the new place. And like when, when it is done, like my old place looks like I was never there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of the the slow move. I want it to be efficient, and I want it to be done. Mm -hmm. Like, I love moving, but I don't love the experience of it. I love, like, I, I, what excites me about moving is the opportunity of new space. Mm -hmm. But it also, the best way, I guess, to explain it is it, it turns the next three weeks of my life into sort of a strategy game that I deeply understand. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the stakes. The stakes are clear. Mm -hmm. I have very clear deadlines about when things have to happen. Um, you know, one of the first things I do is make a big list. And then on our whiteboard in the hall, there's a big list. Mm -hmm. And it's like, these things need to happen. They need to happen by this time. Okay. Um, in order to make these things happen, I require X and Y supplies. Okay. Um... Once I get those supplies, I can start packing things. I can start labeling things. I can start um, packing up furniture, you know, taking things apart, taking the shelves off of bookshelves, thinking about where these are going to go in my in my new space. And yeah, like for for me, it's like the StarCraft portion of moving, <laughs> where you like you you're, you're thinking about your you know the Skyrim point part of the Fallout point where you're like thinking about. Okay, how am I going to build this new base? And to me, like that is the most exciting part of it. Is I have a clear plan, I have a clear objective. Everything, like everything, operates with this kind of clarity. And all I need to do is execute on this plan. So mm -hmm. I'm not a procrastinator when it comes to to packing and moving because uh, I gain I gain the same kind of satisfaction from it that I do like constructing a new house in fallout mm. i'm like this like everything that i have done even if it's a pain in the ass you know just like throw on a podcast and and pack 10 boxes of books 
it ser it serves a larger purpose, and I understand completely what that is. Mm -hmm. No, that makes sense. One of the things I learned from the procrastination this side is actually what got me down was never feeling like I had a place of my own because I was already starting to mentally close off the old place and not all of my stuff was in the new place. Mm. So I always felt like, because I was moving back in with Sarah, the space was mine. She was never not welcoming, but it never felt like I had ownership over the space or I never had a place for myself. And that mm -hmm. wore on me. When I finally moved the last of my stuff, there was a psychological satisfaction that came out of that that I did not expect. But I was like, mm. oh, I feel a lot better now. Because now I can move on. I don't have yeah. to keep my limbo. My, the, I get that from the last walkthrough of the old place, where like you come back the next day, you putty over you know, your holes that you put in the wall, you maybe paint a bit. Like, when it... When, when someone comes in there to, to view it, it looks like no one has ever lived here. Mm -hmm. And and it is that feeling of like, like that that is me closing this chapter mm -hmm. and opening another one. Mm -hmm. And that it is, it is clear to, to everyone that I have left this place behind. Mm -hmm. And I find that sort of deeply satisfying I definitely um, with a studio and the art wall and I have I have a bunch of uh, holes that I will need to fill <laughs> <laughs> I've helped you put a few of these in the walls yeah, many of them yeah but I'm excited yeah I get I, I get I get the thing that I dread is the pressure between Deciding to move or finding out that you're moving and mm -hmm. finding a new place. Mm -hmm. It's that moment where, and I think my turnaround time for this was only like three, three or four days from, from I start looking for places in a spreadsheet mm -hmm. to I had a, like a sign, I'd seen a place and had a signed lease and all the rest of that. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I find that like, that is the part that I dread. I find it profoundly stressful because I have to sort of be an extrovert and audition for a bunch of people and I'm surly by nature <laughs> I I like I, I want to interact with people on like very specific terms and this is exact it's exactly the opposite of that I met the neighbors of a place that I was looking at and I'm like I don't want to talk to you ever and it's not because I think you're bad or irritating. I just don't have the energy for this. Yeah. I have too much other stuff on my mind. Please back up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's that sort of that, that uncertainty really gets to me. Mm -hmm. And it makes me question, you know, do I do I really have to move? Do I really want to move? What are the motivations for 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 doing that? And it really hits a bunch of my sort of anxiety bits. Um, and makes it unlivable. But as soon as as soon as that paperwork signed, as soon as as soon as it, I know for sure. Moving mode activates. Yeah, and you have a black belt in moving. Essentially, is how you've described <laughs> it. Between you and your mom, you you've described that you, like you could probably I don't know teach classes. I, I don't know that I could teach classes in moving. Um, like I have helped a lot of people move, probably thirty or forty people in the mm -hmm. past know 10 years mm -hmm. and that includes like moving city to city to uh you know moving just a couple of streets over but it's it's one of those things where where moving is one of the areas of my life and, and the sort of like stuff organization piece mm -hmm. where where you really get rewarded for being organized mm -hmm. and everyone knows that like everyone wishes their move was was better organized, and I will do the I will wish the same when I am moving in a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. But it is one of those areas that really that where it really pays off, and I enjoy making and executing on those kinds of lists. So so, yeah, I mean the straightforward moving advice is like get get all your paperwork taken care of before you have to move. Mm -hmm. Because then it's not on your mind. Like the like, the sooner that gets transferred, the sooner 
the sooner you get steps down that road and you know what those steps are, the sooner it's off your it's off your mind. Label everything, every piece of furniture, every box. Um, one of the things I did last time that I'm probably going to do this time as well is I have a lot of books. Yeah. A lot of books is not just tagging my bookshelves with where they need to go, but tagging my boxes of books so I know what bookshelf they came off of. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the reason why they go back on the same bookshelf matters is... is as the only reason that matters is because I have enough books that it's hard to fit them all on all the bookshelves. <laughs> so it takes bookshelves of very particular sizes. But, and it's also, like, it's a peace of mind thing. Mm-hmm. It tells me it tells me immediately by looking at something where it belongs. Mm-hmm. And I find that that's really useful as somebody who is, who is moving um, as well. As if you're helping and you know where something goes, you don't have to think about it. You just put it there, you move on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. You know, dollies, if you've got uniformly sized boxes, dollies suddenly become useful. Yep. And that saves a lot of strain, especially as we get older. Which means the uh, corollary of that is don't pack your shit in black plastic bags. Don't be that person. (laughs) Have everything in boxes because boxes stack and make it easier. Yeah, I, I used to... I used to do black plastic bags for clothes. Yeah. But even now, like, I'll just get a big box oh. and anything else that goes in my suitcase so that I, I, I have a suitcase of clothes, so I know I have clothes for, like, the next couple of days mm-hmm. for sure. And then anything else goes in, like, a big box, and I'll sift through that when I have time. Mm-hmm. But labeling the new place is super useful Mm -hmm. because then you don't have to describe it and as long as your labeling system is consistent you're like oh this goes in bedroom one I walk in the front door there's a little just masking tape guide this way to bedroom one Mm -hmm. okay this goes in here this goes in there Mm -hmm. so there's no there's no sort of back and forth Uh, one of the things that I find really important about moving is sort of maintaining relationships with people who are helping you move yeah, like it strains it. It strains relationships sometimes. It can, especially it can. because, like, nobody really wants to be there. By the by, the middle of moving, very few people are having like a super good time. Mm-hmm. Um, the person that you were helping, like the mo- the movie, is is always like stressed out mm-hmm. because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of moving pieces, so it's worth. It's worth thinking in advance of how you're going to look after those people. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you going to feed them? When are you going to feed them? How do you communicate that? Um, like, like, and making and make that plan clear. One of the things that I did, I've done in the past, and I want to do again is is just like have like some granola bars and Gatorade at the new place, so that when we get back there with the first load, we don't have to worry about dishes. We don't have to worry about that. There's just like here's some here's some quick energy. To keep you going. And then we'll get like pizza or something later. Mm. There's a lesson I learned from uh, an older gentleman, Gene. You know, he's ex military, uh, helps out with, um, he helped to establish a, par- a cadet park that is also a memorial for uh, peacekeepers, and he helps out with a special needs camp, and like he does a lot of grass cutting up there. And I remember one lesson, uh, he's got a lot of really good lessons. Um, One lesson that he kind of taught me was, you know, I, you know, a teenager helping out and I like really work hard. Like you, which doesn't sound like something really like you go and you're like, if you're chopping down a tree, every blow is the hardest hardest thing you can swing. And you know, you try to cut as much grass and he always looked at me and he's like, you know, like it's not that it's a volunteer thing. He was like, don't, don't work as hard because like. Like don't burn yourself out. You're you, yeah. get, you, you need to, keep, to get it. You have to. You don't have to get it done now. Yeah. You just have to get it done. Yeah. You just. It's as long as you can kind of keep going. Don't worry about working hard. You're not getting paid for this. And I think as a person who's moving. So if you are the person moving and you're soliciting help from other people, while uh, in the organization or at least in the the planning of it, is you have to think how can we do this so that everybody doesn't have to work and kill themselves physically. Yeah. yeah. 
to help you because they're there helping yeah. you. How do we how do we share this load? Yeah. Literally and figuratively. Yeah. Like, how do we make sure that nobody feels like crap the day after? Yeah. There's a couple other tips that uh, that I've used that for my, I guess, brown belt in moving. <laughs> um, God, I regret the phrase. I, I remember when I was first moving into my, like, the first apartment that I was signing for, um, I went, uh, strangely enough, I went back to a, um, a property management company that I'd lived with before. I had a very good... Um, experience with them mm-hmm. you know it wasn't it wasn't a perfect uh, time living with them but the management company I felt I, I really liked I went back to them and I asked them I said here's where I'm working here's roughly my budget do you have anything available and they looked they had a, a giant map with a bunch of pins and they're like you know what? I think like this would work and this works within your budget and I didn't have to submit any kind of background because they already knew because they already knew me they signed huh. me practically on the spot so leveraging past experiences um, be mindful when you move to one of the first things that you should consider moving off is especially if you're moving by yourself having a place to sit down because when you first move into your place you don't have like you can sit on boxes or you can sit on the floor and a lot of the times you don't think about that until you, you like you're tired you're like I want somewhere to sit down yeah. it's like I have to sit on my ground uh, if I want to eat I have to sit on the ground and eat so it's, be mindful of like un- unpack something that you can sit on also, the first things that you should get into your apartment are toilet paper and something cold to drink in the fridge, whether it's beer, yep. water, or whatever. Yep. If you're if there's a fridge that's plugged in, get it in the fridge and get a roll of toilet paper in the washroom because you don't <laughs> want to need to have it and not have it. Yeah, that's the night before stuff. That's the night before stuff. In your case, that's because you're moving all in one go. With me, when I'm doing it by myself, this is a by yourself kind of thing. So those are some tips that I have as well. Fair, fair. So yeah, if you have moving tips or moving stories, share them in the comments below. Mm-hmm. Um, as always, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram now, I believe, mm-hmm. uh, and on Patreon, mm-hmm. uh, where you can uh, support the creation of this podcast and co-op adventures and the streams, because we are now streaming on Twitch mm-hmm. every Tuesday and Thursday and often some other days. <laughs> um, Rich and... Uh, I mostly and Kaylee and I have been streaming Dream Daddy, mm. which is super fun. But in the meantime, uh, we will see you around. Yeah, uh, happy moving, Jim. God, <laughs> I'm probably gonna end up being there. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. We're signing off. Stay awesome. All right, let's get a show on the road. Somewhere there exists almost four seasons of me saying. Let's get this show on the road. Hey, if we can do a super cut of almost anything now. Oh, <laughs> Let's get the show on the road. Let's get the show on the road. Let's get the show on the road. Let's well, there's a hundred plus of them from Rich and I, too. Oh, yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs>